to get to Jamboard, you can go to jamboard.google.com or you can open up Google and you'll find it in the little waffle icon Google Apps section. So it's in our list and you could find it either way, whichever way you would like to access it. I'm going to take a tour now of the web version of Google Jamboard. So let me back up just one step. When you first go to jamboard.google.com, you're going to see this screen and it's basically all your recent jams. It's easily accessed just by scrolling through here. You can make it list view or you can create a new one. So that's what you know you would do by clicking on that orange little plus button on the bottom left hand corner. So let's just take a quick tour of what you're going to be seeing. It looks kind of similar to a Google slide, but it is, it's got some big differences too. So on the top left-hand corner is where you would click and be able to rename your files. This, on the far right corner, you'll see three dots. And this is where you can also rename it. You can download your jam as a PDF. You can save each frame as like an image if you wanted to, and you can remove, delete, and other stuff, make a copy. On the top, you'll see where it says one slash seven. I have some other uh, pages on here, but every jam gives you a total of 20 different pages up there. So you would add more just by clicking on the arrow. We're gonna look at those in a minute, but you'll see the numbers changing. So now I have 10 pages, 11. It goes up to 20, okay? so. That's how you add pages is just by clicking that little arrow. What's cool is this tiny, teeny little triangle underneath the frame too. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but if you click on that, it's going to expand all your frame. This is cool if you need to like resort things. So you can do like drag and drop and resort up here. You can also click on the three dots of any frame and duplicate or delete. So that's just another way to kind of navigate your pages. That's the top part. Now let's go over here, background. You have seven options for backgrounds on a, on a jam. White, you have some dots, some line paper, squares, this little grid, and then you have dark blue and black. So that's the only colors right now for background Next to it is clear frame. You can wipe everything off of your page just by clicking that. And so now let's look at the things that are gonna make your Jamboard interactive. These are the tools that are on the left-hand side. So first we're gonna look at the pen. You have four different types of pen um, and six colors. Okay, let me click on this blue one. So you have a pen that's the kind of line that that will give you. A marker, which is like a little thicker, highlighter, and paintbrush. So although it does look a little like it, you know, maybe limiting, you only have like four, you can't like change the width and stuff, and then you only have like six um, colors, you can really get creative with how things look just by like drawing and using these different widths, I, I promise. And I'll show you an example actually with that. Underneath that is eraser. You can just you know, erase whatever you write with. The select tool you're going to use when you actually add different items on there, like your sticky notes or your images and stuff, and you would use that to move them around. Sticky notes, probably one of the coolest, most used features for Jamboard when you're doing some kind of collaborative work, and we're going to try this out later. So here's what you could do. So first, you can just type in here and select a color that you want and it will add your sticky note to your frame, right? You can move it around, make it big, rotate it, edit it by clicking on edit. You can change the color, okay. The next thing is adding images. So your images, you can upload, you can do a Google image search, add files from your Google Drive or if you have pictures in your Google Photos upload a photo, just like the sticky note, you can select and you know resize it, move it around and stuff like that. So there is no ability to add videos, which 
seems a little limiting and maybe someday they will add that feature, but you can add a, a GIF or a Jiffy or whatever. And if you install some kind of Jiffy extension, just like this one that I have, you can add a little movement to your frame just like that. So you can add ones like this. You can add ones like that that are kind of just fun and add a little fun to your page, but you can also create your own GIFs by using like WeVideo and who knows, maybe you would want to add one showing a quick little way to divide or whatever. And you want that on there to sit there so the students can actually see how that works or you know, to tie a shoe, whatever. That's a way that you can add like a video of some sort to your, your jam. Another fun extension that I would probably add on here is like a Bitmoji. You can um, add the Bitmoji extension, but you can drag down Bitmojis on your frame. This next, so you can add shapes, circle, square, here's a text. So you can add a text box. Wow, this is really cool. This has just been updated. Change the font up here, the color. Okay, this is very cool. So shapes, text, and then the last one on here is the laser. So the laser is just exactly what it is, like a little laser tool. So if you're presenting something, maybe doing a little lesson and you wanna highlight something really quickly, you can use it to circle it, say, hey everyone, look at on the top left of my screen. And you can like use that. It'll just do like a little laser and then it'll disappear on you. So that's the interactive part of your Jamboard and the tools. So the iPad version, I do wanna show you one project that I did and I wanted a, a program to use to do like a little sketch note. We wanted to create this like a little visual. I did this all using Jamboard and it was really easy. You know, there's other tools that you can use to do sketch note, but I found that this was so fun and simple to use and I loved it. The extra tools that are on here that you wouldn't find on the web version. On the bottom left-hand corner, you see that plus sign. You have, you'll, you have your sticky notes, you have your ability to add images, you have these stickers. So these stickers, they do have these like little cutesy ones on the top, but the ones that I found very helpful for when I did that sketch noting were little grid um, where you have like, like different size boxes. So you can draw in here and then um, add these stickers to your sketch note or whatever. They have a calendar, they have these different stickers. The big difference with the tools comes with the pen. So you have your, your pen, the same pens and the same colors actually as you did before, but towards the bottom, you see assistive drawing tools. This is kind of cool because I'll start with the A. What this does is you can write on here and then like magic, it will turn it into text. And it does the same thing with like a shape and it also does something even more fun if you're trying to draw a picture of something. For example, if I wanted to draw a flower, I don't wanna get my own like fine clip art on Google or whatever. So you draw one and then it gives you different things you can select. You can even like try to draw, I don't know, will it, will it do like a tree? Let's see. Yeah, so that's my tree, but then it gave me like an evergreen, all these different things. So that's fun. Just a different, you know, thing that you can access via the um, iPad app. So you'll see if I go to my jam page, you'll see the thing that I created on my iPad will show up here too. I think it's on page two. There it is. Let's talk about some different ways you can use this for synchronous learning. So during your live video calls, you can use it just as a, a whiteboard. You know, you can demonstrate something, pull it up, draw, write. You don't even have to share anything, right? That's one way. The power in it, of course, is, you know, using it to collaborate with others too. So when you have your jam, let's say I wanted to make this collaborative, just like a Google Doc or Google app, you would click on share. You can add people individually, okay? or you can go towards the bottom 
and change like the get link option. So you can make it strictly anybody in Deerfield 109 and select editor or viewer. And we'll talk about that in a moment. This is set to editor and you'll see why. So you can, you could share it via uh, just viewable or have it editable by making people editors. And then you could share that link of the jam with your students via your Google Classroom or Seesaw or even in a chat. If it's like on the fly, you could just throw it in the chat of a Zoom call and have them all open it up. So things to consider when you are giving full access. Anybody, if they have editing rights, anybody can move other people's stuff around. They can even erase writing, they can delete items. And it's not like the other Google tools where you can see kind of version history and see who did the deleting, unfortunately. I think at some point they're gonna add that technology to this, but for now, you don't. If you do have an incident, you have an opportunity to embed some good digital citizenship and you know, into that. The good thing is, is that if you share it individually, so let's say you added your Google Classroom students for, for access and editing, once everybody's on adding, uh, editing, you can see their name on the top right hand corner or left hand corner of like whatever they're working on. So you can kind of see them doing whatever they're doing. The teacher can act, can change the access from editor to viewer at any time. So if I was having an issue, I could just go to share settings and change it from editor to view. You can also start as view only and then let it go and make it, make it editing right. So then they can just go nuts with it. Um, some ideas, let's talk about that. So you can do like some activities where you have them preview something, review, predict something, infer something, and then have them discuss about it. So you can post an image and have students like reflect or share their ideas by adding like the sticky notes or they can draw. Uh, that example was something like this. So I just found this cute little image. And if you were gonna use it as an inference lesson, you would have it up here and ask, what do you think dad is doing? And the students can go over here and add their sticky notes. Maybe somebody says working. Maybe somebody's gonna say shopping for me, you know, whatever. And you could see that as it's being added, you can see what everybody's kind of thinking and then talk about like, oh, that's so interesting. Why did you think about that? I didn't, I didn't even think of that. So it could be just a fun way and I don't know, students and even adults like who use this, just have fun using this as a, as a tool. You can pull, you can copy anything on here. For math teachers, you can take like a screenshot of a worksheet or work a problem that you have, maybe from a lesson, big ideas or something. Let me go back here. Um, you can take a screenshot and add that math problem right to the page and then just have students either discuss it or write on it or whatever. So you can basically put on here, you can make this the whole page if you want. The other thing about math that I was going to suggest, if you don't already use it, and I know many of our math teachers are familiar with it, but if not, there's a great extension called Equatio. So it lets you build your own equations on a Google Doc, but then it lets you copy it. So I'm just like clicking it, copying it, and I can easily paste that right on my Jam. Science, so the first time I learned about Jamboard was they had us do this activity where it was at a time where we were all in the same room and they had all these materials on the floor and we had to build an instrument. I think seventh grade does something like that rubber bands, plastic cups, balloons, and we had small groups, had to go get some items and build an instrument. So it was really fun. We had some hands-on activity, but we used Jamboard, each of us on one jam were assigned to a page, or we just grabbed a page on the jam. Um, and then we just took pictures of our experiment, 
added thoughts, added sticky notes. So adding stuff, we wrote on it. At the end, each of us, each of our groups had a page with all our experiment. It was just a fun, cool way to collaborate and, and add our science information on it. A couple more options for like your live calls. You can pose different questions and then just have them using the different tools on there to answer. Do some getting to know activities, um, relationship building, classroom community, social emotional skills. Like it's just a, a fun different tool to use for collaboration. And this idea is something I definitely want to share for my breakout room people. So one of the, the things that lacks in, in Zoom is that you can only be in one room at a time, right? So you're kind of like, oh, what am I missing over here? You can create a jam with different pages. Everybody on the, the Zoom call is going to be on that, but they're all on their own specific page. So if I'm in a breakout room with three other people, we're going to use one page, put our thoughts on there, whatever our main ideas that we're talking about. And the teacher has this that she can look here, she or he can look at and, you know, kind of check in. And even though she's not in every single room can kind of see what's happening. So I thought that was a, a fun thing to maybe try. I want you to try this. So open a tab, go to bit.ly slash 109 online jam. So here's the slide we're working on. Grab a sticky note, add your name to it, and just tell us what you prefer. I want you to see the ease of using this with your students and just by doing like a simple activity like this. So the bit.ly again was right there, bit.ly slash 109 online jam. So which do you prefer? Put your name on a little sticky and drag it down there. You might want to resize it if you feel like it just to see and then also make room. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious, Christine. <laughs> I won't tell your cat. <laughs> that's so funny though. So you can see like the simple little activity, just like a, could be a fun icebreaker or something totally simple, but it's getting, you know, everybody involved you can chat about it. It's just, it's a, it's a great versatile tool. <laughs>